Welcome. In this video, we continue to look at consolidated statement of financial position and we'll turn our attention to goodwill arising on consolidation. But before we do that, we'll look at dividend paid by the subsidiary. A little recap again before that is on the pro or is on and controlling interest. And we said in our past video that the procedure to consolidate when these non controlling interests is to aggregate all assets and liabilities in the statement of financial position, notwithstanding what P owns. And this will show the amount of net assets which are being controlled by the group. We'd also have to show the share capital of the parent only. Then the balance of subsidiaries reserve, reserves are consolidated after cancelling out any intergroup items. And thereafter, we calculate the non-controlling interests, share of subsidiaries net asset, which will constitute of share capital and reserve. We also have issues where goodwill could arise, where dividend could arise. When a subsidiary company pays a dividend during the year, the accounting treatment is not really difficult. Suppose S company, a 60% subsidiary of P company pays a dividend of shillings a thousand on the last day of its accounting period. In total, Reserves for paying dividends stood at 5,000. There are certain things that you need to know. That shillings 400 of dividend is paid to the non-controlling shareholders. How do we arrive at that? It's 40% because the parent is owning uh, 60%. The non-controlling interests will only own 40%. So it's 40% of a, a, a thousand, which is 400 of the dividend is paid to the non-controlling shareholders. The cash leaves the group and will not appear anywhere in the consolidated statement of financial position. The parent company receives sharing 600 of the dividend. That is 60% um, of a thousand. And the debit cash and credit profit and loss. Of course, it's the subsidiary who should, uh, it's the parent who should debit cash and credit profit and loss, and this would be cancelled out on consolidation. The remaining balance of retained earnings in S company statement of financial position, the 4,000, that is uh, uh, 5,000 minus 1,000, will be consolidated the normal way. The group share, which is 60% of 4,000, 2,400, would be included in the retained earnings in the statement of financial position. While the non-controlling interest, 1,600, is credited to the non-controlling interest account, non-controlling interest account in the statement of financial position. Let's now turn to goodwill. And goodwill is the excess of amount transferred plus amount of non-controlling interest over the fair value of net assets of the subsidiary. And basically, uh, how we compute goodwill is that we take the consolidation, the, the consideration transferred, usually the amount that the parent has paid to acquire the subsidiary. From that, we less the net assets acquired by the subsidiary and the net assets would constitute of ordinary share capital, the share premium and the retained earnings on acquisition, which sometimes we refer to them as pre-acquisition profits. So when we add those items, we'll arrive at that figure. And when we less the net assets acquired from the consolidation transferred, we'll arrive at what would uh, want to call goodwill. But this presupposes 
that the parent owns the entire of the subsidiary. Things would be different if there was non controlling interest, right? But we shall show how to do that. To begin with, we'll examine the entries made by the parent company in its own financial statement. When the company, the parent purchases shares in the subsidiary, of course, it will debit investment in as which is an asset. If the asset was worth 60,000 with 60,000 and credit bank with 60,000 there, but we are assuming it, it only bought shares worth 40,000. But what shall it credit? What, what, what shall happen? Uh, to be to peace book the, the same entry that we've made. Now, when the directors of P agreed to pay 60,000 for a hundred percent investment in S, they believe that in addition to its tangible asset of 40,000, S company must have intangible assets worth 20,000. This amount of 20,000 paid over and above the value of tangible asset acquired is goodwill arising on consolidation. Again, we have goodwill when we pay more to acquire a subsidiary than it is actually worth. When on consolidation, we use a normal cancellation procedure and the 40,000 share capital in S company statement of financial position is canceled out with against the 40,000 investment in S in the financial in the statement of financial position of P. And this leaves a shillings 20,000 debit, which will appear in the consolidated statement of financial position as goodwill arising on consolidation. Sometimes you acquire a subsidiary when it has been trading, eh? because you've been assuming we are acquiring the subsidiary on the same day that it was formed. But what if it has been trading and it has made some profit? The profit that it has made before it was acquired are referred to as pre-acquisition profits. Up to now, we have assumed that the subsidiary never had any retained earnings when shares were purchased. Assuming instead uh, S company had profit of 8,000 in the period before acquisition. In the, uh, its statement of financial position just before purchase would look as follows. Eh? We have total assets, we have share capital and retained earnings. And these retained earnings bef because they were earned before the subsidiary was acquired, we refer to it as uh, pre-acquisition profits. If P company would purchase all shares in S, it will acquire total assets worth 48,000 at a cost of 60,000. And therefore, there's a goodwill of 12,000. Kindly note that any earnings retained by the subsidiary prior to acquisition by the parent company must be incorporated in the consolidation process so as to arrive at the figure for goodwill arising on consolidation. In other words, Pre-acquisition profit is used when you are computing goodwill, all right? And uh, we do not aggregate them when we are preparing the, sta the, the, sta the statement of financial position for the group. Only post-acquisition profits are retained. All right, we shall see that. Let's look at an illustration. We've been told that Think Company acquired shares worth, acquired the ordinary shares of Wing Company on 31st March when the draft financial position of each of the company was as follows. We have seen at the top, uh, and we've got Wing at the bottom. We see Wing, Singh rather, bought 50,000 shares of Wing at cost, but paid them 8,000 there, eh? all right? Uh, 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 and um, 
wing shares were only at 50,000. Then we've been told this happened at acquisition. And since wing company has got some retained earnings, this retained earnings of 10,000 will obviously be part of pre-acquisition profits. So how do we compute that? How do we compute, uh, uh, do, do we com compute goodwill in this case? So first thing we said is that this investment must cancel out with that. But you see, we paid more. And the net assets that we acquired are actually 60,000. Eh? All right? So because we'd have to compute goodwill and how we compute it first in our workings, again, I show you the formula that we say the goodwill computation pro, uh, performer consideration transferred in our case that would have been 80,000 ordinary share capital of the subsidiary which we've been told is 50,000 and then the retained earnings which is uh, 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 10,000 our pre-acquisition profit this firm does not have um, this firm does not have any share premium and therefore, if we sort up those figures, we'll see that we add up with a goodwill um, of 20,000. So when we apply this to our example, the workings will look like this. Consideration transferred is the amount that we paid, 80,000. Net assets acquired are represented by the ordinary share capital of S, 50,000, and the pre-acquisition profits of 10,000. Therefore, the net assets total is 60,000. And when we less that from consideration transferred, we add up with goodwill of 20,000. Uh, and from there on, we can consolidate. We simply add up those items that we can add up. The only thing is that we shall show our goodwill, which we worked on. And then we only show the share capital of the subsidiary. But would have to be a little bit careful on the amount that, that we show as retained earnings. Notice the retained earnings, we've not added them up. Initially, the parent retained earnings were 45,000 and the retained earnings of the subsidiary are 10,000. You notice we've not added these two retained earnings together. And the reason for that, this retained earning is part of pre-acquisition profit. Profit that was formed before the subsidiary was acquired, and therefore it cannot belong to the subsidiary. We don't add it, but we use pre-acquisition profit in computation of goodwill but it doesn't form part of the retained earnings of the parent. That's why our retained earnings here, we are only showing for the parent. What if Singh did not acquire the entire subsidiary? Sorry for that. Sorry, let's go back. What if Singh did not acquire the entire holding of the subsidiary? And uh, perhaps it paid 70,000 or 40,000 shares. Now, one thing that I need you to know, to look at, if it bought 40,000 shares, it can only mean its shareholding is 40 over 50, which should give us 80%. And therefore, 80% derates to the minority, how do we compute the goodwill? We simply take the consideration transferred, we add the non-controlling interest, 60% at 20%, because the non-controlling interest is holding the other shares, and then we less the net asset acquired. 
and thus the good will be a little bit higher. We have a question or a comment? On this video then, we'll stop there. The next one we'll look at non-controlling interests at fair value. We shall make reference to this particular question. So do not forget, you, you'd have to go over it again and again because we'll make reference to it. So for now, please like the video, subscribe, and share it to your contacts. Thank you. This has been Moya Kehuba.